I thought this would be a good opportunity to give a ketamine and cervical injection update. Oh my gosh, why are you so obnoxious right now? All right, this is why she was being so obnoxious. Wednesday morning everyone. I am outside wearing a sweater in Florida. It is in the low 70s which is pretty chilly for us. I am really pumped about this cold front. So nice outside. So nice. It is so nice outside. I love this weather. The cooler weather is much more tolerable for my body. I can't do hot weather. I'm heat intolerant. And some of y'all are gonna ask, why do you live in Florida? Well, my family's here, Judd's career is here, my in-state tuition is here, my whole life is here, you know? I've survived until now. We've got good AC, so. Anyways, today I am resting because I don't wanna overdo it like yesterday. I don't regret yesterday, because it was really nice to finally feel more like myself after a very hard week. But that crash was brutal, and it's carrying over to today. And so today I'm resting. I plan to rest tomorrow as well because this weekend, Judd and I have a trip planned. We're gonna be super busy and I want energy to be able to enjoy it. Okay, I'm kind of laughing because I was just thinking, well, when we go on a trip, not only do I have to plan for what I'm packing and what I'm doing on the trip, I've got to plan a few days before to make sure I'm rested and my body is ready to go. So the life of a chronic illness warrior, just gotta do what you gotta do. out the hippo and since I'm just taking it easy today I thought this would be a good opportunity to give a ketamine and cervical injection update so ketamine is a form of anesthesia it's a very safe anesthetic but it's not commonly used because it takes a while to wear off whereas medical centers would rather use something like propofol that gets into your system quickly and leaves your system quickly some people also say ketamine gives them scary hallucinations. I don't experience that personally. I just have vivid dreams and then I'm loopy for about an hour when I wake up. In recent years, it's been found that ketamine somehow resets the central nervous system and how it responds to pain, giving pain relief to chronic pain warriors. But it's still considered experimental for this and most insurance companies will not approve ketamine infusions for chronic pain treatment alone. The way my pain management doctor got it covered was that I needed cervical injections for neck pain anyways, and I had to be sedated for that. So he chose to use ketamine and we found that I got pain relief with the ketamine and it's a much safer form of anesthesia for my body. The injections and ketamine were done just about two weeks ago and it's targeted three main areas of pain for me, head pain, muscular pain, and joint pain. And it's done the best at controlling my head pain. I'll get migraines a few times a month and every other day, if not every day, I'll get a headache that I can function with, but it's uncomfortable. Since the ketamine, I have had no head pain whatsoever. The ketamine has done a really decent job of controlling my muscular pain. That pain is usually in my legs. I get spasms, cramping, burning. It's difficult to walk and do activity. My legs will give out from it. I also get these pains in other areas of my body, so it's just very difficult to move freely when you're hurting like that. But with the ketamine, I got a solid week of no muscular pain or spasms, and then around the week and a half, two week mark, it slowly started to come back, but I still had relief. For joint pain, the ketamine hasn't been wonderful, and that's okay because I'm thankful for the other relief I have. I had joint pain control for about a week, and at the end of that week, my joint pain was back to where it usually is. However, the joints in my neck are still getting pretty good relief because that's where we did the Toradol injections. That is a non-steroid anti-inflammatory drug. And I'd say right now, two weeks after the shots, my pain is half as much where it usually is, though it does spike up throughout the day. So yes, the Toradol injections definitely helped. 
On Monday, I did get ketamine as my anesthesia for my feeding tube exchange, and I did get pain relief with it, but not as much as my first infusion, and I think that's because the anesthesiologist was just using it to put me under for the tube exchange, whereas with my pain management doctor, him and his team are using it to the advantage of pain relief, and that makes sense to me. Plus, my pain management doctor did say each infusion may treat you differently and how it affects you. Right now my doctor and I are waiting to see how long the effects will last me because everybody is different. I did get a ketamine booster on Monday, but if I had to take an educated guess, I would say that the ketamine and shots will last me about a month. I'm not sure if we can do it that regularly, but I'll talk to my doctor when I see him early November. We're also going to look at doing the shots in other joints, like my hips. My left hip actually subluxed this weekend, and it's been quite painful ever since. So we're honestly just trying to maximize this treatment to my benefit. Even if we can't do this treatment as often as my body would need it, I am thankful for any relief for any amount of time. Honestly, waking up every day in pain is draining, and we learn to function with it. I smile, I laugh, I still have a good life, but the pain is always there. Some days are harder than others. So when you find something that works, it's amazing. I share all of this to let you other chronic pain warriors know you are not alone in your journey to find relief. And I want you to know what's out there. Maybe this will help somebody else. So there is my ketamine and injection update. I hope you all found it insightful. You got your pizza from Hidden Valley. Ooh, don't chew it on top of my arm. Goodness. <laughs> Well, I just got a phone call from the durable medical equipment company. Seriously, Harley, you were so obnoxious. Go, go. Who is handling my custom wheelchair. It was supposed to be in on Wednesday, but there is a there was a delay because of a part that came in correctly or the right part didn't come from Germany. Oh my gosh, why are you so obnoxious right now? And then they said it should be here tomorrow. They are finalizing it, getting it together and everything. They are charging up my power assist wheels. And I really hope it's here so we can have it for our trip. We're leaving on Friday. So fingers crossed. All right, this is why she was being so obnoxious. All right, my heart rate's coming down. Had a heart rate spike. Okay, I'm doing better now. Not fabulous but better than 130 where my heart rate was that is due to my dysautonomia my postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome this is the form of dysautonomia i have sorry i kind of cut off the filming there i just got way too dizzy and out of breath to keep filming and that is why harlow was being so obnoxious you may have seen that towards the end she started getting interested in how my breath smelled and that's how I think she can tell when I'm going to become symptomatic like that. With her syncope alerts, where she tells me ahead of time with me fainting, she's very deliberate. But when it's just an odd rise in symptoms like this, sometimes it can be hard to know what she's trying to tell me. But eventually she gets her message across. And right now she's firmly placing her head in my lap saying it's not safe to get up yet. If I stand up, the symptoms will get bad again. This is not something I can train her to do to pick up on my symptoms like this. It's something she's always done naturally and she's improved at it the closer she and I grew together and the older she got, the more mature she got, so. Thank you, Hippo. Thank you so much. Well, I have been sleeping the past few hours just recovering from a syncope episode Harlow alerted to about 30 minutes after that first heart rate spike. And even though I laid flat and elevated my feet, and even though I'm taking all my medicines and doing my infusions and doing my physical therapy and pot safe exercises mostly every day, I'm still fainting. I'm still getting heart rate spikes just sitting on the floor. I'm still not able to walk very far without passing out. And it's frustrating because even when you do everything right, things can still go wrong because chronic illness doesn't always play fair. And it's okay to get frustrated. But when you eventually come to after that fainting spell and realize your pooch has put her pizza on you, you can't help but smile. And honestly, I'm just grateful for the things that keep me going. The support I have surrounding me, Harlow and her desire to keep me safe. The tools I use when I need them, like my walker to keep me steady when I'm feeling very dizzy or weak. 
my custom wheelchair, which will be another great advantage because, like I said, I can't walk very far without fainting, which has left me quite limited. And even though my pain is more controlled, activity brings it back on severely. So my wheelchair will help me conserve energy, I won't be fainting as much, it'll help me with my pain management, and I can go out more and do more things and I'll have more independence. So honestly, it does get hard sometimes, but we just find ways to keep moving forward. Well, I rested some more, now I'm feeling a bit better. I just got Jeb's dinner together, asparagus and chicken in the chicken rub that he just has to bake up when he gets home from his shift because I will be asleep at those hours. Anyways, today y'all saw firsthand how my POTS affects me sometimes and I actually deal with stuff like that pretty frequently. I did want to point out that heart rate is not always an indicator of how bad my symptoms are. Sometimes at 160 beats per minute, I'm struggling, but I'm not fainting. And then other times like today at 130 beats per minute, I am passing out because there's other factors going on like blood pooling. If you want to learn more about my dysautonomia and my POTS, you can watch that section in my chronic illness video. And if you want to learn more about Harlow and how she helps me in her alerting, you can watch my Harlow video and both of those are in the description. You keeping an eye on me? You snuggling with my feet? Come here, Harlow. Come. Come here. Yeah, where's my pup pup? Oh, my puppy dog. Oh, you're right in the camera. <laughs> Lay down. You good girl. Well, had a pretty good day relaxing. And my pots flared up a bit, but that happens. We just keep moving forward. Tomorrow, hopefully, my wheelchair will be here, but we shall see. Tomorrow I have to pack for our trip and I'm already going a little crazy excited about this cold front because I'm planning out all of my like cold weather outfits. I'm excited. Well, we are ready for bed. <laughs> she just wants attention. So with that, I'll say goodnight and thanks for joining us on our adventure.